Okay, so you want to get this onto this so that you don't hurt this. That makes sense. Disclaimer, just to be clear, this video is for anyone interested in playing SMT4 in high definition using a fan-made texture pack. I didn't make the pack myself, but I wanted to make a simple, clear walkthrough for people who just want to get this game running smoothly with a step-by-step -step guide without necessarily having to comb through a bunch of forum posts. Other disclaimer, this guide uses the final stable build of Citra. A newer fork called Azahar is now in active development. It has the same interface and mostly the same settings, so this guide still applies. First, you're going to want to download the Citra emulator from citra-emulator.com. Choose your OS. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to download the Windows version. Open the zip folder and drag the emulator folder into wherever you store your emulation files. I organized mine by manufacturer and console, but do whatever works for you. The file you want to open is citraqt.exe, not citra.exe. If you want, you can make yourself a shortcut by selecting the file holding Alt, and dragging it to an empty space in the folder. Then you can rename it to something like Citra 3DS Emulator, like I have here. When you open the emulator, you'll need to click on Add New Game Directory. Point it to the folder where your games are stored, and the emulator should show a list of the game ROMs you have. Don't have the ROM yet? You can legally dump the ROM from your own 3DS. Though that's a pretty technical process, and not something most people have the tools for. I can't show you where to find ROMs online, but decrypted ones are the ones you'll need. That's what runs in the emulator. Once you've downloaded the ROM, you may need to extract it from a zip or RAR file. You can open both formats using 7-zip, available on 7-zip.org. The file should end in .3ds. Drag that 3DS file into the folder you've chosen to store your games, and you should see it in the game list when you reopen the emulator. Double click on it and the game should start. Boom, you're done. Except there's an update which includes various bug fixes. And there's DLC too. These aren't necessary to enjoy the game, but I can show you how to install them anyway. You'll need to find decrypted versions of both the update and DLC. I'm using a file labeled update v2 if that helps. Good luck finding them, they're out there. These are files that end in .cia. Drag those CIA files next to the 3DS game file, just so they're easy to find. Now you have to actually install the CIA files onto the emulated 3DS system. To do that, start the emulator, start the game, and then go to File, Install CIA, and then choose either the update or the DLC. I don't think the order matters, but I installed the update first. Next, do the same thing for the DLC. File, install CIA, and then choose the DLC CIA file. Next, go to Emulation Stop. Double click the game to start it again and you should see a system message about loading add-on content. The bottom DS screen should also show the current version of the game on the title screen. Mine is listed as version 1.1. I hope that's the latest one. Side note about installing CIA files. I read somewhere that only one file per update or DLC can be installed at a time. So if you try to install multiple DLC CIA files, only the last one would take effect. You would need a CIA file with all DLC on it to have access to all the DLC at once if that's what you wanted. Personally, I've barely played this game, and I've read that the DLC is more endgame focused, so I'm not worried about it. Quick note. I've read that checking the add-on content menu from the title screen might cause problems for some users, especially on real hardware, so I'd avoid doing that, just in case. Instead, after starting the game and reaching the To My Fellow Samurai quest, you can check the Challenged Quests menu. If your DLC is installed, some quests should show up there. That's what I did to confirm everything was working in Citra. For reference, my DLC file was about 22 megabytes, and everything showed up fine. Now that we've verified that the game can run and it's loading the DLC and update patch correctly, I'm going to move on to my emulation settings. And from there, I'll move on to the HD textures. Go to Emulation, Configure. I didn't really change much here except for the graphics settings, controller binds, and the hotkeys. For graphics, I'm running at 4x native resolution, 1600 by 960. Enable linear filtering is also checked. At the bottom, under Utility, I have the Use Custom Textures box checked. 
as well as preload custom textures and async custom texture loading, which is supposed to help reduce loading stutter. For controls, I created a new profile and bound everything using my PS4 DualShock controller connected to DS4 Windows. I wasn't able to bind everything, but I never found myself using the home, power, debug, or other miscellaneous buttons, so it's no big deal. For hotkeys, I didn't really rebind anything, but I did take note of the hotkeys for toggle screen layout, F10, toggle custom textures, F7, swap screens, F9, full screen, F11, and save and load state hotkeys. You can also right click on any hotkey command in the list and clear it, which I recommend doing. I cleared the hotkey for exit Citra, restart emulation, and stop emulation, so that I wouldn't accidentally do any of those things. The next thing to do was close out of the emulator completely so that your settings are saved. Okay, now we're going to install the custom high res textures. The main texture pack was created by someone called Kasaski. Their forum thread on the original Citra site is no longer accessible since the entire Citra website was taken offline because the emulator devs received a cease and desist from Nintendo in 2024. That being said, the forum thread is still available on the Wayback Machine, or you can find download links on Reddit. Also, the Citra 3DS emulator is still illegal to download and use, so no worries there. I used the Reddit link and was taken to a Google Drive page where I downloaded the files individually. Downloading them by selecting them all at once creates a zip file of all the files. Since these are already zip files, that just seems like too much unzipping to do later. But if that's what you want to do, feel free. Right, you're also going to want to skip the SMT4 1.0 zip file, because 2.0 appears to be the same thing with additional contributions from Merkava. So download the SMT4 HD 2.0 zip file. You might want to save it to its own folder of SMT4 setup stuff, like I have here. Open it and click into the SMT4 HD 2.0 folder. From here, we want to open the emulator again, right-click the Shin Megami Tensei 4 game in the list, and select Open Custom Texture Location. The folder that opens should be empty. Back in the SMT4 HD 2.0 folder, inside the zip file, select all the folders for armor, backgrounds, compendium demons, etc., and drag them into that empty custom texture folder. From there, start the game in the emulator. You should see a preloading textures progress bar that will take a couple of minutes to complete. You're seeing this because you enabled this option in the settings earlier, and we want the setting on because otherwise, the game will stutter as it tries to load the textures individually as you're playing the game. And that should do it. It might be a little hard to tell from the title screen, but you can press F7 to toggle the HD textures on and off. It's definitely more noticeable in-game with things like character portraits. Also note the HD textures do not affect the intro FMV, since that's a movie file and not a static texture image. The other button you're going to want to press is F11 to go into full screen, and F10 will cycle screen layouts. All the screen layouts seem decent, but I like the one that has both screens on the right, and the main screen enlarged on the left. The one with the large screen taking up most of the space is also nice, but I like being able to read the menus without straining my eyes too much, so I'll sacrifice a slightly smaller main screen in order to have a readable secondary screen. Installing the other textures is optional, but you might find some use for it. The forum page says what each one does, but I'll repeat here briefly for convenience. Lop Show's add-ons are HD miscellaneous textures. Download the Lop Show's miscellaneous pack, icons, etc. zip file, click into the miscellaneous Lop Show folder, highlight all the files, and back in the game's custom textures folder, go into the miscellaneous folder, and then drag the Lop Show files there. When asked about replacing files, just confirm that you're okay with overwriting everything. Intento 2's add-ons are also HD miscellaneous textures. This link is only on the archived Citra forum thread for whatever reason, and not on the Google Drive link on the Reddit page. The file replacement procedure is the same. Just make sure you're dragging those files into the miscellaneous folder inside the custom textures folder. Kaito Deluxe's Japanese version HD texture files are for HD kanji for people wanting to play in Japanese. I chose not to download these since I'll be playing in English. And finally, Pug O's static overlay fix replaces an occasionally appearing static overlay with a transparent texture for clearer visuals. This is definitely not required, but I did it anyway. 
There was some uncertainty in the forms about where to put these files. I copied them into the base folder that has all the other folders in it. Armors, backgrounds, compendium demons, etc. And I copied them into the miscellaneous folder. No overwrite conflicts either way, so I hope it goes alright. Here are some other notes about my experience setting up SMT4 in Citra with the HD textures. I'm using a DualShock 4 controller with the program DS for Windows. That's my preferred way of playing emulated games, because it's highly customizable. I'll leave a link to that in the description. The HD textures will turn off if you load a save state. That's fine, just press F7 to toggle the textures off and on again and you'll see them. If you want to see the bottom screen larger, just press F9 to swap the screens. There's a small sound stutter when you do that though. But that's normal. And just to reiterate, Citra is no longer in active development due to legal action by Nintendo. However, existing builds are still publicly available and free to use. As far as recent developments go, the two forks of Citra that were independently continuing 3DS emulator development based on Citra, Pablo Mark 7 Citra and Lime 3DS, have merged into Azahar. This emulator looks and behaves exactly like Citra and is actively being worked on. Link to that in the description as well. So, why didn't I do the tutorial with Azahar? I honestly didn't know about it until making this video. Right now emulators state compatibility with SMT4 as just okay. So that's another factor that led me to stick with Citra. One small thing I also noticed is that I set custom keybinds in DS for Windows so that left and right movement on the right stick would correspond to pressing the left and right shoulder buttons on the 3DS for controlling my camera. Citra respects this remapping, but Azahar does not. I'm not sure what's going on there, and it's such a small thing, but I thought I would call it out. Also, if Azahar isn't showing your ROM files, Make sure to rename any .3ds files to .cci for Azahar to display them. Okay, so hopefully you followed those instructions, you're seeing the textures and enjoying the game. Let me know if this guide helped you. Thanks for watching and have a good one.